This is the new iPhone 15 Pro Max and for me, is the best disappointment that Apple has ever made. It has a nice design and it's a little bit on the lighter side, but apparently it's also fragile. Then we have the new processor, which is even more powerful, but it also has some heating problems. And finally, we have USB-C, although the cable that comes in the box, it doesn't get the most out of it. The iPhone 14 Pro was great and this one, well, it's even better, but it's Apple's stupid decisions that kind of taint my opinion of it. That's why I will try to be as objective as possible in this review and at the end of the video, well, just highlight some of their poor decisions. So let's start talking about its design, which is almost identical to the one we had last year with the exception of this new side button, which is not in the best position, but at least we will be able to customize in the settings and even use shortcuts. We also have a new titanium frames, which are easily stain but they have made it possible to reduce the weight of the device. This is something you will feel instantly when you're holding it for the first time but I would say that even more important than this is the slight curvature of the bezels in the back panel. That when holding it with one hand it feels so much better and when you compare it to last year pro well you can see it. This curvature is also in the display and with the slightly smaller edges, it will improve your experience. Last year, I remember telling people that this phone was one of the worst in terms of ergonomics and it's funny how with one small change, well, it can improve so much. Still, you will want to use a case on this since it's one of the weakest iPhones we have seen so far, especially the Pro Max version. But changing the subject to something where you should probably take the case off, well, let's look at the performance. Which, according to Antutu, it tells us that it has improved but very little actually. And the same is true when compared to the Geekbench results. Also, in real tests like opening apps in two rounds, this new iPhone has become three and four seconds seconds faster than the iPhone 14 Pro. In other words, yes, is more powerful, but you won't notice it. What you will notice though is how much warmer it gets. And for this, I used the 3D Mark stress test. And after a while, I turn it over and start measuring the temperature, which in my room, it came about 45 degrees Celsius. Then I repeated the same test on the iPhone 14 Pro and it gave us an even higher value. But as you can see right here, we got throttling on both of them. So this thing that the iPhone is heating up a lot, it's true and even Apple has confirmed it, but is nothing new, especially compared to the last version and we could even say that it has improved. Also, I've been charging it with other USB-C cables and I haven't felt any kind of heat so far. And that's why I'm quite satisfied with its performance, which when I'm playing games, it gives me one of the best gaming experience so far. Even in the new Monster Hunter Now, which I have used quite a lot outdoors. The system flows smoothly when navigating through apps and the battery lasts me for more than a day of use. I understand that with a three nanometer processor, we were expecting a better power consumption and a better performance, but if we look at it objectively, it's an improvement. And in the same vein, I could also talk about the cameras, which a few days ago I compared versus the Pixel 7 and the S23 Ultra. And in a general way, well, it has a very solid camera with a color science that it's quite appealing but without overdoing it. The night mode is also fantastic with more detail than the Samsung and an unrivaled front-facing camera as well as a macro. Where it no longer surprised me was with the Telephoto 5X. Let's say it's good but well, it's quite below the Samsung. In video mode, it also gives us very balanced results and so much so that it will continue to be the phone that I will recommend to all of those who want to record videos. I will not comment anymore about the camera since I did a whole video about it that I recommend you seeing it, but let's say that, yeah, it's still one of the best that you can get. So for the conclusion of this video, I wanna explain what I said at the beginning. It's the best disappointment that Apple has ever made. There is no doubt that this iPhone is the best so far, but at the same time, it's also the most criticized. They made it compatible with USB 3.0, but in the box, you get a 2.0 cable. And for a company that talks so much about the environment, this sounds kind of fake. What they also didn't told us is that this phone, it's much harder to repair 
repair, as you can see in this article from iFixit. And considering that its titanium design has made it weaker than the iPhone 14 Pro, let's just say that this doesn't look good. I could also give you other examples, like the worst quality of their new cases that still cost the same, or my confusion that this new camera feature doesn't exist on last year iPhone 14 Pro when it shares the same main sensor. Anyway, this is a great phone and it's still one of the best that you can get. If you have an iPhone 12, 11 or even the 10, this is a great upgrade. But at the same time, I am kind of happy that people are not being swayed by fanatism or marketing talks, which I personally despise. But this is just my opinion. And if you have a different one, I can read it in the comments. But anyway, I see you in the next one. Bye bye.